welcome all today we start with our prayers as usual sada shiva samarambham shankara acharya madhyamam asmada acharya paryantam vande guru paramparam all of you can chant with me gurur brahma gurur vishnu gurur devo maheshwaraha guru sakshat para brahma tasmay shri gurave namaha <clears throat> children we are in the 11th chapter and it is nothing but a roller coaster ride why because initially arjuna saw the beautiful swarupa the nature of lord where he enjoyed all the good things but very soon it was a downside ride and it was not so enjoyable we have seen in the last class why it is not enjoyable because he is seeing his near and dear ones getting killed and he is taking it very personally but he is a warrior and he should not he should just relax and enjoy that he is a warrior he has to do duties and he has to kill the enemies unfortunately his own uh, uncles grand grandfather are in opposite enemy because of some reason but he has forgotten that and that's why this roller coaster ride for all of uh, whoever does this mistake what the lesson is for us is that we should see not just what our eyes is uh, seeing in the world sometimes some people might behave with you not so good but that doesn't mean they are internally not good sometimes why we lack to see is because of that vision this vision of seeing goodness in everyone in each thing of creation is called divya chakshu and for that today we uh, swastik and sharo are going to discuss a bit about it both of will have a dialogue let us listen to it i'll stop this here okay swastik and sharo shall i highlight both of you can give me highlighted yes sir and sharo yes, sir. swastik sir swastik and okay yeah both of you go ahead yeah there we go we start hari am everyone so um, to start our explanation what is divya chakshu to me rather than spiritual achievement it's a mental state of acceptance that the whole world is god the whole world is world is good nothing is bad it's just the way we perceive it now for my side of the view is that much more rather than a mental state it is more of a spiritual achievement which you can earn there are two ways you can get it either one you earn it through your ways or second you can get it directly from god or the rishi munis now the first one which i have mentioned the former is forever yours and you will not have to ever give it back whereas the second one at one point after you die you have to give it back to god for after you are killed by god he takes back all that you have yet sends you back so this is my side of the view so here what he is trying to say like we can give an example of we can see a challenge kind of thing uh, we can see some people are some doing some big big challenges nowadays so why not give an example of that so you can either eat the best food of your life for one day or the best food in the world anybody is ever going to taste in the in their life let be it animal or human or you have the second best food in the world that anybody has tasted but you have it for your whole life now to like uh, make merge this with divya chakshu you can never have the god given one when you're seeing all of it physically you're not um, having that state or spiritual achievement which even you know it is there you're seeing it with your own eyes you're seeing it you're not knowing that it's there but uh, that 
only lasts for a little while because most people can't endure it. Even many people like me, all normal people in this world, all humans, most humans can't endure it. Or you can have the one that we're learning in class, like we're learning about the rejection and how to achieve it and have it for your whole life. So it can be a personal achievement or it can either be a gift from God. However, we are only making assumptions because we do not know the true abilities of the Gajakshu and what it is actually. But as we always do, we always make predictions first. So these are just a few predictions. Only people who really have Divya Chakshu can tell us. And that is from our side. So that's our view on Divya Chakshu, how we perceive it, and one or two examples. Hariyo. Excellent. Hariyo, Excellent. You. you have given a good example. But for the very little ones like Ananya, Anvit and uh, so many other ones, Divya Chakshu means something, a vision given by God. If when you go to God's uh, prayers, we ask something, right? So here Arjuna asks God, I want to see your glorious vision. Like he's asking for a 3D, 4D or 5D movie to be seen. Okay. The screen is same. God is same. But now he wants to see something extraordinary. For that, what does God do? God gives him a 3D goggle or 4D goggle. You know, you have gone to the movie and when the goggle comes, he can see a lot of things. But in that, there is not so good things also. Like if sun is very far away, you can see the sunlight. Imagine there are thousand suns together and they are coming near to you. Whatever goggle, whatever you have, Jakshu, you have to remove it. That's what exactly happened with uh, Lord Vish, uh, sorry, uh, Arjuna. And he had to remove that Divya Chakshu and only God can take it out. In this few verses, how he does it, what he says to God is explained in the following verses. So let us have a look at it. Thank you very much, Sharo. Thank you very much, Swastik. This is a fantastic way of discussion. Maybe next time uh, Nayana and uh, Aditi or someone can do such discussion on some topic. Okay. Let me go back to uh, Spotlight has to be removed and share. Good. How do I share now? Okay, standard. Why? Why can't I share? Okay. Okay, so we are here. Are you able to see? Yes, sir. Okay. So first words today, 11.31. Vishnu. Vishnu, you are ready? Yes, sir. Go sir, ahead. I... Chant and then we chant after you, okay? How, sir, how much should I chant? One line, right? Yeah, there are one, two, three, four uh, lines. One line you chant, then next, and then next, and then next. Okay, okay, sir. Right. Akya hi meko bhavan ugra rupo. Akya hi meko bhavan ugra Namo stu deva vara prasiddha. Namostudevavaratasitam <laughs> Nahi prasya nami tavatravutim. Good, Vishnu, good. The meaning of the verse is uh, Sir, can I tell the down part first? Yes. Akyahi tell. 
मैं मी कू भवन यु उग्र रूप फॉर्म नमा अस्तु आई बो ते टू यू देववर गॉड ऑफ गॉड्स प्रसिद्ध बी मर्सीफुल विज्ञात टू नो इच्छा मी आई विश भवंत यु अद्यम द प्रिमेबल न नॉट ही बिकॉज प्रज्ञा कॉम्प्रिहेंड तव योर प्रवृत्ति वर्किंग टेल मी हु यू आर so fierce of form o god of gods i bow before you please bestow your mercy on me you who existed before all creation i wish to know who you are for i do not comprehend your nature and workings so next slide earlier arjuna had requested to see the universal form of shri krishna when krishna had exhibited it Arjuna became bewildered and agitated having witnessed an almost unbelievable cosmic spectacle he now wants to know the very heart of the god's nature and purpose hence he asks the question who are you and what is your purpose thank you very good but what do we understand from this initially he only asked uh he requested god first that i want to see your extraordinary rupa the yes. form yes. and now why is he asking again that tell me the who are you really why is he asking like that have you any idea why because he did not fully understand it exactly why because there is still a doubt why god is also beautiful as well as not so beautiful why god is so merciful and as well as cruel why is he cruel because his mouth last classes we have seen huge mouth big tusk and he is eating half bitten flesh blood is coming out from the yodhas this is what he is seeing and that's why he is he is now confused for example tomorrow for example vishnu you like which player in football sir uh, mbappe Oh, now it is Mbappe. I thought it is Messi. No, sir. Okay, I, we like. like M- I never like Messi. I like Messi. Okay, Aniket likes Messi. Uh, Vish, uh, Vishnu likes Mbappe. We take Vishnu's person, and Mbappe comes to your home. Like you are in the dream, you are asking, "Oh, Mbappe, can you come to my home? Show me your glorious form." He comes to your home, right? How happy you will be, right? Yes, sir. you will be right happy but he will take all your things he will sleep on your bed and let you sleep down or he will do lot of mischief after two days you will be confused oh who is this embargo what really he is the same thing is happening with uh, arjuna in a different form embargo is not lord vishnu is lord but vishnu is showing him all the things which he cannot comprehend comprehend means he cannot understand his a uh, little mind cannot know everything what vishnu wants to show lord vishnu want to show and that's why he is asking once again please clarify my doubt who are you and what is your purpose in this entire creation so let us see what is his answer sharo over to you hari am everyone today i'll be saying the verse 11.32 shri bhagavan uvacha लोकाह प्रवृत्त लोकाहृत्ता प्रत्यनीकेशु योधा 
The meaning of this verse is The Supreme Lord said, I am mighty time, the source of destruction that comes forth to annihilate the worlds. Even without your participation, the warriors arrayed in the opposing team shall cease to exist. So, next slide. So, after Arjuna expresses all his fear, like that bad part of the roller coaster, where he sees the evil, not evil, the evil, cruel, the disturbing part of Lord, uh, and he asks a question, which was explained previously. Krishna, he accepts what all Arjuna has said. He knows this. And he replies that he is Kala or death. Many of, now, many of us are familiar, familiar with Oppenheimer, especially after the movie. He is the inventor of the atomic bomb, the great destructive tool. So that's one picture of the first atomic bomb there. So I'm sure many of you know him. So he was the one who invented the bomb like during the tragic Nagasaki and Hiroshima blasts. He quoted this verse in English in his own words, not exactly and stuff, saying, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Now he also, he was studying Gita a little, if I'm correct, he had studied Gita. So he had just said his understanding I would say of this verse because he is telling that he is death. He is the one who destroyed the millions of lives. So he's accepting that. That. So it is hard to accept. But the one who kills even the great good ones, he is Krishna. He makes them, he kills them. That is part of his duty. Hariyo. Excellent. And uh, this verse, uh, as he explained about Oppenheimer and the destruction, the, ma the biggest destruction happened ever, man-made destruction. We know tsunami, we know corona, all are there, natural disasters are there. But to man who made it and he made it against the human beings only. I think uh, Swastik, you also wanted to have this verse, if I'm not wrong. Swastik, you're there? Yes, sir. You also wanted to say this about this verse, yes, right? Yes, sir. I'm here. You, you want to say something now? Yes, sir. That is true. No, sir. No need. Sharav has said enough, I feel. Okay. So what uh, Sharav's verse was about is we are all, when we see life, life in any form, birds chirping, butterflies flying, a flower blossoming, anything which is life is very beautiful. But when there is death, which is a natural phenomenon, it's not unnatural for any one of us. Those who are born have to die one day. There is no escape from this Kala Tattva. And this Kala Tattva or Yamaraja who comes and takes you, your soul away, is none other than Vishnu himself. Lord Vishnu has explained in 10th chapter, I am Yamaraja, isn't it? I am that Kala, I, in all the Kala Tattva, I am Yamaraja. He has explained already. Same thing he is telling now. Yes, when he wants to tell Arjuna, when Arjuna's confusion he has to remove, he understood why Arjuna is afraid. The fear factor is not the life which he showed, the death part. And death part is something which cannot be avoided. For any being, existence, it has an end. Even the wood, which is not moving, has an end one day. Even the rock, bricks, everything has an end one day. Entire universe has an end, right? So, this he understood and he explained him in the form of telling, I am the death, the Kala Tattva, and I will be destroying things, so do not worry. With that, we come to the next verse. What he is explaining more, the next two more verses, Krishna will explain his form, which has been confused by uh, Arjuna's understanding. Naina, over to you. 
Namaste everyone. Today I'll be saying the 11.33 verse. I will request you all to chant after me. Tasmatam muttishtaya shola bhaswa. Jitvashatrun bhunkswarajam samradham. Jitvashatrun bhunkswarajam samradham. Mayavate nahitaha purma veva. So here the Lord says, Therefore arise and attain honor, conquer your foes and enjoy prosperous rulership. These warriors stand already slain by me and you will only be an instrument of my work, O oh, expert archer. I think the last word, Savya Sachi, in this verse, uh, we, I would like to elaborate on this because it said that um, Arjuna could uh, shoot arrows with both his hands. So even if his left hand ha had no strength to carry the bow, uh, bow anymore, he he used to shift his hand to the he used to shift his bow to the right hand and he used to uh, put uh, uh, string arrows and um, uh, release them with the left hand, not the right hand. So he is. It is said that so this is uh, that's why he was known as the best archer. And there's another story for this uh, last word over here in this full meaning. Oh, expert archer. It said that um, when um, Arjuna was young, uh, he saw after you know when he was when he was in Gurukul, and then it's it said that uh, there was while eating food. Uh, there was a gush of wind which came and all the uh, uh, fire uh, torches which were lit had blown off. But Bhima observed whatever was on his leaf and um, he completed his food in the dark itself where everyone was trying to on the light. So uh, seeing this, Arjuna felt like he wanted to try it with his um, like, uh, his R at uh, uh, his part of the uh, uh, his astra, and then it said that in the night he asked Nakula and Sahadeva uh, uh, in the archer's place. He asked Nakula and Sahadeva to uh, uh, put torches all over the uh, archer's place and blow it off very quickly, and. Um, Arjuna hit every single bullseye in the dark. So then Dronacharya comes and says that you are a very talented archer. So this is also a, you know, part of the why Krishna calls him expert archer. So in this verse, Krishna says, uh, since he understood that Arjuna is really um, scared, uh, he under he says that you are just a um, mere weapon of mine, uh, just a mere instrument of mine to uh, uh, to kill these Kauravas, Bhishma, Drona, extra, etc, etc. So, and then he says that conquer your enemies and enjoy the a rulership very happily because I know you people are going, you Pandavas are going to win, but still I am telling you this because you asked me. And then uh, these, uh, he says, these warriors stand slain by me. So he's saying that uh, previously itself, all these uh, Drona, Karna, uh, Bhishma, uh, Duryodhana, uh, Dushyasana, etc., etc., were all uh, 
slay uh, were all you know previously seen the past itself by krishna but for this time he wants to um, this time he wants arjuna to do it uh, uh, according to what the verse says and then he says that these people have already been slain by me so you are just a mere instrument again to slay them and complete my work o arjuna dhanyavaad and thank you sachin sir for giving me this opportunity thank you naina so what confusion still exists when you don't have to do anything and still he will be what arjuna was told that even if you don't do this i have already uh, done this before so what does it mean many people will take this verse wrongly do you know what is katputli the puppet yes sir. many people who doesn't understand this verse they will say all of our human beings are like puppet in the hand of god no that's not what the verse means that's not what lord krishna wants arjuna to understand he is saying oh oh arjuna see i have already decided what is dharma and what is adharma means what anyone who is fighting against uh, adharma he will win now here we all know arjuna was in dharma side and that's why he is going to win if arjuna also was in adharma side he will definitely lose so the rules of dharma adharma has been laid down by lord long long back not only now in the avatara of krishna rama any avatara he has already taken avatara for ruling over adharma because adharma was prevailing so badly krishna's whole life if you see when he was small he killed kamsa and chanura isn't it then putana because he has taken avatara that lot of evil things are happening he will take all the evil people out that's why he is saying oh arjuna you have to play your role as warrior anyhow i am going to kill these people so you just become the mere medium for it and you are already trained for doing this how you are trained even left hand becomes weak your right hand will work so alternate hands can work for you that is what sabhya sachin means but children do you know why krishna chose basuri over so many instruments musical instruments there are so many musical instruments we all know anyone knows why basuri was chosen sir because if you can play it on one side you can change it to the other side no okay yes, i know it's going to be difficult so it related to this words basuri is chosen by arjuna or krishna is because the only instrument which doesn't have any it's a hollow instrument from both ends it's made up of a special bamboo hollow inside when air is flown on one side it just let it go it doesn't have any ego all other instruments have some kind of string attached lot of ego if this string is played in g minor that sound will come a minor a c minor all that sound minor major but basuri is a instrument which has only holes let it go no ego all surrender so this words what is krishna telling to arjuna is you just surrender and do your duties for children also if they surrender to your teachers your parents your elders and follow your dharma you always know dharma is going to win let other children other bullies anyone in the life who is doing nonsense let him do what he wants to do you don't compare yourself god has already set rules about how dharma will win over adharma how good will win over evil so if you surrender completely to lord's uh, path you will win that's what this verse is telling do you understand children that's why krishna yes, has sir. chosen basuri and krishna has chosen arjuna over everyone over all the other means okay so let us all surrender to lord and then you will automatically fall on the right path surrendering means not blind surrender you should know what god what is right what is wrong let us go to the next verse that is 11.34 swastik over to you 
Thank you, sir. So first, I will start with the verse. I hope everyone follows after me. Dronam cha bhishmam cha jayadratam cha. Dronam cha bhishmam cha jayadratam cha. Drashtam cha. Karnam ta tha. Dronam Karnam Satadnyan Apiyo Dhaviran Maya Hatan Swam Jahima Vyatishtha Yudhyasya Jeta Shirani Sapatna the literal explanation for the verse is Dronacharya, Bhishma, Jayadrata, Karna, and other brave warriors have already been killed by me. Therefore, slay them without being disturbed. Just fight, and you will be victorious over your enemies in battle. So, next slide. Now, what this means is that that Krishna has already killed the Kauravas. He encourages Arjuna to kill them without being disturbed, to fight without fear, and he will be victorious against them. This verse also has a reference to verse 11.32, where he says, I am time, the source of all destruction and annihilation. This refers to the fact that time has already prepared a person's death at the right time. You cannot change a person's fate. Like how, for example, suppose you are still young, maybe about six to seven. You get a new toy. Now, this toy is very meaningful to you. You like it very much. You like to play with it a lot. It's very fun. But at one point, which has already been prepared, you need to let it go. At one point, it's not, it's not enough for you now. You need to focus on new things. So this is what this verse means. At one point, everything has to leave and go. Everything has to go and everything has to go. That is the meaning of what happens. Thank you. Special thanks to Sachin sir for giving me this verse. Thank you. Thank you very much, Swastik. Excellently you explained. This also means the same, that you have to surrender to God's creation and everything in creation has a end and once end comes do not hesitate to accept it just surrender to him he will take you to the right path he will guide you to the right path and our right path means dharmic path and dharma will always lead to moksha okay so now going to the second last verse today 11.35 aditi over to you aditi hariyo om shri gurubhyo namaha Sanjaya Uvacha Sanjaya Uvacha Eta Shrutva Vachanam Keshavasya Eta Shrutva Vachanam Keshavasya Pritanjalir Vipamana Kiriti Namaskritva Bhuya Eva Krishnam Namaskritva Bhuya Eva Krishnam Sagat Gadam Bhita Bhita Prayana Pranamya Having heard these words of Krishna, the trembling Arjuna saluted and bowing down with fear, falteringly spoke to Krishna once again and again, once again with joint palms. Sanjaya is narrating. He is saying that Arjuna is trembling with fear. He, he is folding his palms and bowing down to Lord Krishna. 
Krishna has explained that it is not him who is responsible for the sufferings of the people. He is just the karma phala data or next slide please. Or in other words, he is the judge. We must understand that life and the punya that we are experiencing now is because of our free will and fate. So what is free will? We can understand this by taking an example. If you sow a bad seed, you will get a bad plant. And that uh, or what you sow is what you get. And similarly, if you perform bad action, the result will also be bad. Coming to fate, we all know that we have lived, uh, you know, previous lives. Now, whatever actions which we performed in those previous lives will be resulted or passed on to this life. And these are also called pr uh, prarabdha karmas. And Krishna is the judge or the karma phala data who ensures that we get what we deserve. Hari Om, thank you. Excellent, excellent, excellent. But to make it a little more simpler, can I just add into it? Children, now every day you have a homework. It is your free will. Ananya, Anvet, Vishnu, you have a homework every day. It's your free will. There is no special that day, right? You make the homework that day, you make after one week, you make after 12 days, or you don't do it. But what is the fate? Can you anyone tell me? Punishment. The fate? No punishment. No punishment. Punishment also will not be given. But fate is when you go to the exam hall. Exactly. When you go to the exam hall, the questions will decide your fate. The answers you will not get. If Sir, you are you, prepared you every won't day. Know anything. You, know, you won't know anything in the exams. So that results will become your fate. Isn't it, children? So if you do your work every day very well, if every day homework is done with choice, I want to do it, I want to finish it, that means your duties is your free will. The results, obviously when you do your duties well, what will happen? The results will be A+. plus. Correct? Am I right? Is Ananya clear? Vishnu clear? Yes. Sir. No. Home, homework should be done or not? That day itself. That is a simpler way of telling what is free will. Okay. Another is there is everything in the plate. So that is your free will. Today we are, today after this class we will have dinner. Ma Amma will give everything. But someone people not like chutney, someone doesn't like sambar, someone doesn't like uh, whatever in the plate. So if you don't eat everything according to what one should eat, what will be the fate of such a person? Will he grow Health. or will he not grow? <laughs> Health will deteriorate. That is fate. So this, children, you understand everything every day, what is required to do is your free will. You have a choice to do it. But sometimes we will choose wrongly. If you allow your parents to choose for you, that is God comes in the form of parents, teachers, elders, then and then only when you surrender to that, like Arjuna surrendered to Krishna after this verse, then only you will get the good results. Okay? Yeah. Now let us go to this shloka, 11.36. Tanush. Tanush is there today? What happened? Tanush was supposed to have this shloka. Now, okay, we will chant. Now Arjuna is explaining. Anyone wants to chant this shloka? Sir, uh, can I? Okay. Ah. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. Tane Prakirtya Sthane Shiva Sama Prakirtya Jagat Prahrishyatya Anurjyate Cha Jagat Prahrishyatya Anurjyate Cha 
Okay, Aditi, uh, can you also read this out? Sure. Arjuna said, O master of the senses, it is but apt that the universe re rejoices in giving you praise and is in a, in a, in, in a mold by you. Demons flee fearfully from you in all directions and host of perfected saints bow to you. So this after this uh, shloka, actually the Gita is over because Arjuna has understood everything what has to be understood. Right? Before this, the last three verses, when Krishna was... Uh, not able to, uh, Krishna was not perceived well, but after Krishna said, I am also the good and the bad, I am the birth and the death, I am everything in this universe, even people don't know me, who have uh, no faith in him, and you please surrender, after this, he has really surrendered, and he has now understood, he is seeing none other than the master of all the senses, he is entire universe himself, he is not part of Krishna, he is not a part in the universe. He is the entire universe and we are all the part of it. And when you see such a huge thing, huge dimension, you cannot perceive it. Okay? So, uh, this is the thing after this verse actually, he has understood and he is now praising uh, Lord Krishna. He is trying to praise him. And praise means he is really in full of bhakti. That's why after 11th chapter, Bhakti Yoga will start. 12th chapter is Bhakti Yoga, if you re remember it. We have done that chapter. Last verse today, we will finish this verse. Ankita, if she is there. Hari Om, Hari Om. Aapka sound is very slow. You can close the video. Moksha Ankita. You can close the video and Kasma Chatena Namirat Mahatman Kasma Chatena Namirat Anant Devesh Jagannivas Anant Devesh Jagannivas Tvamaksharam Sadastat Param Yat Tvamaksharam Sadastat Param Yat Indicates that Krishna is worshipable by all. He is God of all gods. He is omnipresent and is the soul of everything of this universe. Arjuna addresses Krishna as infinite and there is nothing which which not covered by the influence of God. Also, Krishna is the controller of, of all gods. He is the shelter of the universe. Arjuna told that all other gods salute the Lord now. Arjuna specifically, specifically mentioned that Krishna is the Brahman because Brahman was him, Vishnu. It is said in Sri Bhagavad Gita that Shiva, Amma and Goats, Lord Krishna, here the Vaksharam is very important because the world is 
but god is immortal he is the reason of all causes so he is superior to all hari om so thank you very much uh, your though your sound was little interrupted we understood so he is now giving salutation to god like we have so many prayers like you know lingashtakam uh shad aksharam so many prayers we have chanting right like that now this verses are like prayers to lord again showing his bhakti again showing that how lord is so important he is the word aksharam aksharam means he is not perishable whatever happens outside the world nothing uh, affects him because he only made the entire universe so he is aksharam he is immortal and he is telling different ways to uh, worship god in this verse particularly shloka is okay for you okay so we come to the end of today's class and let us chant this all together om purnamad purnamidam purnat purnamudachate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate om shanti 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 hari om